Captain Gallant, brought to you by the great new Lego system by Samsonite and by the makers of famous shopper plastic games and by Lionel, world famous for trains, science sets, and other fine products. Lego is here. Hey, kids, look. A whole new world to build. Because Lego is here. This young boy has such fun. He used Lego one by one. Wibbity, nap, patty, whack, don't stop a plane. This young boy's glad Lego came. Lego, a whole new world to build. This young girl has such fun. He used Lego. Hotels, animals, people, boats, skyscrapers, and more. So kids, get your Lego set now at department and toy stores everywhere. Lego, the sensation of Europe, now made in America by Samsonite, who make it better for longer-lasting fun. Deck the halls with boughs of holly. Tra la 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 la. Tis the season to be jolly. Tra la 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 la. It isn't fair. What's not fair? The captain promised me he'd take me back to America for Christmas, where there's snow and where it's cold. Yeah, I know. And the colonel promised the captain he could go, because the general promised the colonel. But somebody higher than the general changed the general's mind. Down through the chain of command came a big, fat, round no. My boy, you're in the army, you know. But I haven't seen any snow in my whole life. Oh, well, snow isn't so much. In the first place, it's not near as deep as it used to be when I was a boy. And in the second place, it's wet and cold and, and nothing to it, really. Nothing but sliding down a hill on a sled, making a snowman and throwing snowballs and ice skating. Well, well, it's highly overrated, Cuffy, highly overrated. Besides, a fella can catch a cold doing those things, you know. Oh, King Wilson, Lot looked out on the feast of Stephen when the snow lay round about deep and crisp and even. Where's Cuffy? Ah, hi, partner. Did the colonel change his mind, maybe? Did he say we could go? Oh, I'm afraid not, Cuffy. Something happened in the city of Bella Beth, and my... Well, my replacement didn't come through. Ah, oh, darn. Oh, we couldn't get to the States in time anyway. Tonight's Christmas Eve. But we could see some snow, couldn't we? They don't turn off the snow the day after Christmas, do they? No. No, there's usually some left around. I was just telling Cuffy, Captain. Snow's not so much. Nasty, wet stuff usually turns out to be slush anyway. He's right, Cuffy. But I want to see some for myself. Well, we'll have a good Christmas right here. How? Well, you'll see when the caravan gets in from Marrakesh. It's loaded. With what? Well, they have a half a dozen 20-pound turkeys and sweet potatoes, popcorn, plum pudding, mincemeat. No presents? I believe there are a couple of presents. Aren't there, Fuzzy? Well, it uh, seems to me I heard something about presents. Uh, and there's that uh, very special surprise. What is it? Well, if we were to tell you, it wouldn't be a surprise, would it? Oh, Fuzzy, I think we should tell them to sort of make up for the snow. Maybe you're right, Captain. What is it? Tell me. Tell me. Well, the caravan is bringing a Christmas tree with all the lights and all the ornaments. A real honest-to-gosh Christmas tree? A real honest-to-gosh Christmas tree. From way up in the Atlas Mountains. Gee, maybe it'll be a good Christmas after all. <laughs> sure it will, partner. Their hours overdue already. Even if they do get through the storm, the camels are too slow to get here in time. Maybe camels are too slow, but horses wouldn't be. Well, what do you mean? You could take a patrol and meet them at El Crim. 
We have no way of knowing that they'll get that far. You can try. I'm not going to. Why not? I'm not going to risk a lot of men and horses to, in a sandstorm for a few sacks full of trinkets. Cubby, this isn't a matter of life and death, you know. No, it's just Christmas, and you don't care. You don't care about anything the kids care about. And I don't think you were going to take me to America to see the snow, either. You're just... just a stingy old man. All right, you better go and saddle your own pony. Why? Aren't you coming with me? Oh, no. Why not? My father doesn't allow me to ride outside the town by myself. Well, you won't be by yourself. You'll be with me. I mean, you won't let me go into the desert without a grown-up along. All right, then, if you're afraid. I'm not afraid, but my father has spoken. Okay. I don't think the Captain Gallant would like you to be riding alone in the desert, either. He didn't tell me not to, did he? No, but he has grown up, and grown-ups are strange about these things. I think you should ask him first. He doesn't care. He doesn't care about anything, not even Christmas. Nobody around here cares about Christmas but me, and I'm going out to find it for myself. Nobody's seen him. Yeah, I knew he was upset about Christmas, but I didn't think he was so upset he'd miss a meal. I never heard of such a thing. It's plum unnatural. Andre. Excuse me, President. This little one knows something. Abdella, have you seen Cuffy? Yes, mon capitaine. Where? In the stable. When? Two hours, maybe three. What did he say? He said he was going to find Christmas. The caravan. That sounds like it. Sergeant. Oui, mon capitaine. Saddle my horse. I'm going after it. Tout de suite, mon capitaine. Only. Yes? I request permission to go along with you. Oh, that won't be necessary, Sergeant. He can't have gone very far. Excuse me, sir, for saying so, but this time I think the sergeant's right and you're wrong. You see, sir, I saw Cuffy cross the compound. He was probably on his way to the stable then, but I didn't know. But what I do know, sir, I never seen a bull with his lip out as far as his. What do you mean by that, Fuzzy? Just this, Captain. Cuffy ain't out for no promenade. He's probably spurring that pony for all he's worth. No telling how far he's got by now. I think Fuzzy's right, Mr. Captain. Saddle three horses, Sergeant. Wait, Mr. Captain. Christmas Eve, mon vieux. Not even the Legion works today. Sure, I know. And tomorrow is Christmas. And I aim to see it's a merry one. I don't get you. Cuff is gone and got himself lost out there. What do you mean he's lost? I'm telling you, the poor kid's lost. The desert is a big place. A very big place.
Father, this is as far as we can go. There isn't another oasis out there for nearly 100 miles. And it's too late to get back to the fort. So we just got to camp out here tonight. Well, Bab, I guess I'd better get some more wood. Don't worry, Baba. That was just a bird, I think. I hope you had a good dinner, because I sure didn't. There's only green dates on those trees. Here's Buster Crabbe, sometimes Captain Gallant of TV, and always one of America's greatest all-time athletes. Here he is at his summer camp at Saranac Lake, New York, where sunshine, fresh air, and good food are rules of the day. Right, Buster? Right. And for extra pep and energy active children need, we give them Bonomo Turkish Taffy at camp. Bonomo Turkish Taffy is a wonderful energy snack for that extra bounce that keeps you on the go. Bonomo Turkish Taffy is the action candy bar because it's the candy bar for active people. And there's action when you eat it, see? Smack it, crack it, and there's fun ahead. Bonomo Turkish Taffy is delicious. Get the action candy bar at your favorite store. All four flavors, vanilla, chocolate, strawberry, and banana, only five cents. And if you only have a penny, enjoy Turkish Taffy Penny Rolls. B-O-N-O-M-O, Bonomo's, oh, 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 it's Bonomo's. Hey, partner. Uncle 
my. Glad to see you, Uncle Mike. Oh, we're glad to see you. Boy, what happened to you? It's a good thing the Colonel isn't here. There's one thing he can't stand, it's an untidy legionnaire. Do I look better now? Uh-huh. You had your dinner yet? Yeah? No, not exactly. Here, chop down on this chocolate bar while I rattle up some hot chat. Gee, thanks. <laughs> Pretty puny fellow you got there. I was just going out to get some more wood. Yeah, you stay here with the captain. I'll find some. <clears throat> I'm sorry, sir. Yeah, you should be, Cuffy. You had us all worried. You know, anything might have happened to you out there in the desert, alone at night. I know. Didn't you think of that before you left the fort without permission? No, sir. I was just thinking about Christmas. I thought if I could find a caravan, I could bring in the presents myself. Christmas is a lot more than presents, Cuffy. I know it's turkey and snow and Christmas trees. And it's a lot more than that. It's peace in the hearts of men of goodwill everywhere. It's love for your fellow men. Yes, sir. Right now, there are a dozen men out there in the desert. They're not spending a comfortable Christmas Eve in their barracks. They're out there in the dark and the cold. Do you know why, Cuffy? No, sir. Because they're men of goodwill. They weren't assigned to this duty. They volunteered because they love you, Cuffy. There can be no greater Christmas present than that. Gee, I'm sorry. I'll be glad, Cuffy, that there are men like that in the world. Here he is, my Bob. Are you all right, Cuffy? Fine. Well, it's been quite a night, Monty. Are you well, my friend? Yes, thank you. I'm sorry I put you to all this trouble. No matter, Cuffy. As long as it goes well with you. We'll camp here tonight, Sergeant. Pick up the horses, pass the word to the other men. We will, Cuffy, do. Come on in. Gather around the fire. A fine Christmas Eve I made for everybody. Stuck out here on this desert. First Christmas Eve was on a desert just like this, Cuffy? Without any snow or Christmas trees? No snow. No Christmas trees. Just sand and oases and little towns of mud brick. Towns like Oradon and Zagora and Wazazat. Only this town was called Bethlehem. Where's that? On the eastern edge of this very desert, over beyond Egypt, in a land that's called Judea. And now it's called Holy. It was on a night like this, nearly 2,000 years ago, that a man named Joseph and his wife Mary came to Bethlehem to pay their taxes. And it was a long, hard trip, because Mary was expecting a baby very soon. It was late when Joseph and Mary got to town. There wasn't any room at the inn, because a lot of other people had come to town to pay their taxes. And Joseph was worried. He couldn't ask Mary to sleep out on the desert under the circumstances. And then what happened? Well, that night in that stable in Bethlehem, Mary's baby was born. Jesus? That's right. A lot of strange things happened the night that Jesus was born. Another angel appeared in the sky above some shepherds who were watching their flocks. And a star appeared in the east. And three wise men saw that star and knew that it meant the king of the Jews had been born. 
And they followed the star all night across the desert until it stood still above the town of Bethlehem. And they knew that it was here they would find the baby Jesus, lying in a manger, wrapped in swaddling clothes. The Prince of Peace, the Son of God, born in circumstances more humble than any ordinary man. And the wise men came, and they saw, and they worshipped. And they brought gifts, presents of gold, and frankincense, and myrrh. And those were the first Christmas presents, that gold and that other stuff? Not exactly, Cuffy. The first Christmas present, and the greatest, was Jesus himself, who brought to all men the promise of peace, the example of sacrifice, and the lesson of love. Christmas, Sergeant. Where you know coffee? Merry Christmas, Sam. Merry Christmas, Cuffy. Merry Christmas, Luigi. Buen Natale, Cuffy. Merry Christmas, Joe. Merry Christmas, Hans. Fröhliche Weihnachten, Cuffy. Merry Christmas, Igor. Merry Christmas, Dan. Merry Christmas, Harvey. Gee, thanks, Cuffy. Merry Christmas, John. Merry Christmas, Cuffy. Merry Christmas, Uncle Mike. Merry Christmas, Cuffy. I ever had in my whole life.
is a tense moment at the launching base. As the huge Atlas missile with the man-carrying Mercury capsule is prepared for the shock, now for the first time, this most powerful rocket is to be launched from a railroad car. The new Lionel Mercury capsule launching car. The astronaut is moved to the capsule hatch by the new Lionel cherry picker car. It moves off. The countdown begins. Nearby at the new Lionel heliport, a Navy copter takes off to make the recovery. The countdown proceeds. Four, three, two, one. And the liftoff, the capsule separates and settles gently to Earth by parachute. And you control the action. Remember, boy, you're the boss on land, in the air, and under the sea when you own Lionel Trains.